If you've ever thought to yourself, I would practice, I just really don't know what to practice, that excuse is no longer going to be available to you by the end of this episode because I'm going to give you 28 jazz skills that you can practice starting today. I'm going to break them down by category so that you know exactly what you're working on. Let's cue that music. Welcome to the LJS Podcast, where you get weekly jazz tips, interviews, stories, and advice for becoming a better jazz musician. And now your host, he's a jazz musician, author, and entrepreneur, Brent Bartstra. Hey, what's up, everybody? Brent here. I'm the jazz musician behind the website LearnJazzStandards.com, which is a blog, a podcast, and videos all geared towards helping you become a better jazz musician. Really excited that you're here. As always, like I said, today is going to be an episode where I'm going to end that excuse of I don't know what to practice because I have 28 different things I'm going to break down by category that you can be working on starting today to improve your jazz playing. Now, when I thought about doing this episode, I was a little hesitant to do it because this is going to be overwhelming if you allow it to be. I'm going to be giving a lot of things that you can do. And on top of that, because I don't want you to be hearing something to practice and not actually know how to do it, I'm going to be referencing a lot of podcast episodes, videos, and posts that I've done to teach you how to do these different things, all right? So uh, I'm also going to have all of the links that I mentioned today in the show notes. You can find the show notes at uh, learnjazzstandards.com forward slash episode 153, but I'm also going to be mentioning them on the episode today. We have a huge content library at learnjazzstandards.com, and so I just want to make sure that you uh, are honing into all the resources that we have there. So treat this episode really as something to not only give you inspiration for something to practice, but also as just sort of a diving board to tons of other content that we have on Learn Jazz Standards. I want to help you out as much as I can. So take out a notepad or your phone or whatever while you're listening to this. Don't you know plan on practicing all 28 of these, but you listen for one that really uh, you know sticks out to you, one that you think that would be really beneficial to you that you want to hone in on either right now or in the future, all right? Okay, so now uh, before we jump into the episode today, uh, if you're wondering, hey, man, Brent, what happened to the guests? Like, I haven't, I haven't seen a guest on this show for like a month, and you'd be completely right, but don't worry, don't worry, we are having some guests coming on the show very, very soon. In fact, in the next episode, we're going to be having a guest on, all right? So hang in there with me. Uh, we're going to be having a lot of guests on. I really wanted to start the year out with uh, a lot of teaching solo episodes, but we're going to be diving into some great interviews that I have planned for you this year. So uh, thanks for being patient if you are one of those people that really loves listening to the guests. All right. Okay. So without further ado, let's jump into this episode. All right, again, one last disclaimer here uh, about this episode. It's a lot of information. I've already said that. The, the problem with the information age that we live in is that obviously all the answers are available to you on YouTube, on podcasts like this, on blog. I mean, there's just so much information that we can learn, but the problem is there's no process to it. And I was talking uh, with a good friend that we're going to have on the show actually uh, coming up very soon here the other day is that one thing that's really beneficial about courses uh, and stuff like that is is process. It's it's a way to actually organize and give you a, a, a path to learning something. That's why I have courses like 30 Steps to Better Jazz Playing, which is my premier jazz practicing course. So just want to keep have you keep that in mind that this is a lot of information, uh, but that's why I want you to really listen to the things that are mostly good, that you think are going to help you the most right now and not get overwhelmed by all of this but uh, just use it for ideas. Okay, so let's start. The first, the categories I'm going to be working out with are called, um, what we call them the big three. Uh, this is what we use in my 30 Steps to Better Jazz Playing course. The big three are technique, they are jazz repertoire and jazz language. And those are the things that I really believe if you want to become a better jazz musician, those are the categories you really need to be working out of and can ignore a lot of the rest of the stuff. I'm going to add one category that I'm working out with, uh, working out of for this episode, and that is ear training, because I think the fundamentals of ear training are also very, very important uh, for becoming a great musician in general. So we're going to be having some materials from that as well. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's start right away. The first category category is going to be technique. Okay, I'm going to go through these really quickly. So be prepared, be vigilant. 
Okay, number one is scales, okay? Just work on scales, all right? If you have not, you don't know what to do, work on some scales. Make sure you know your basic scales, maybe melodic minor, some other uh, kinds of scales, maybe diminished scales, major scales, minor scales, any scales. You can just simply work on scales. That's number one. Number two is patterns, working on pattern exercises. Uh, it, specifically, you can do this over scales. Now, we talked about this in episode 151. So if you want to learn about applying patterns for scales for jazz improv flexibility, go check out episode 151. Write that down if you're interested in that. So number two is patterns. Number three is arpeggios, right? Chord tones uh, over different chords. Make sure, of course, you know them, your majors, your uh, your minors, and the all, all that stuff diminished. Uh, make sure you know your triads, your seventh chords. But you can also do things to actually make it creative and start tying it together in an improv way. So I actually have a really cool chord tone exercise video that I did on YouTube that I'm going to suggest to you. So if you go to learnjazzstandards.com forward slash cool chord tone, that's learnjazzstandards.com forward slash cool chord tone, you can check out a cool chord tone exercise using arpeggios that I uh, demonstrate there. So number three is just simply work on arpeggios over chords and chord progressions. Okay, number four is anything that's instrument specific. So maybe you have no idea what to practice today, but you're thinking, I need to do something. Well, anything that is instrument specific technique to you. So if you're a trumpet player, this could be long tones, right? Or a saxophone player, that could be long tones. If you're a guitar player like me, this could be practicing in a different position on the fretboard than you're used to, one that is foreign to you, right? Or it could be uh, reading on the fretboard, right? So any technique that you know that a teacher has told you is specific to your instrument itself that you need to work on, all right? So that's number four, okay? Number five, we're going to break now into the category of jazz language, okay? We're talking about jazz language now, things that you can learn to understand the language of jazz better. So number five is, uh, we're gonna also, the, this, we're going to start this category out with some more theory-based stuff, and then we're going to move to the more aural stuff. So number five is work on enclosures, okay? Enclosures is a improv technique, and it really helps you get this bebop sound going. Uh, if you have no idea what that's all about, I talk about this uh, recently in episode 150 about using enclosures to create bebop lines over a jazz blues, okay? So go check out episode 150 after this if this sounds like something you should work on. So number five is work on enclosures. Number six is practice pentatonic scale application. So different chords that you can apply pentatonic scales over work on that stuff because you know sometimes scales uh, can be helpful to conceptualize different note choices that you can make not necessarily to play scales to improvise because then you start sounding like you're just playing scales but to look at things from a different perspective of how you could approach uh, how you could approach improvising or chord uh, note or note choices rather that you can choose all right, so it's pentatonic scale application. I did a great video on that. Uh, I believe eight different chords that you can play pentatonic scales over. That's uh, You can find that at learnjazzstandards.com forward slash pentatonic scales, okay? Learnjazzstandards.com forward slash pentatonic scales. Again, guys, I'll have this all linked up in the show notes today. So number six is pentatonic scale application. All right, now moving to more of the aural stuff of jazz language. Number seven is learn a jazz lick by ear. Go to a recording, any recording, and find a lick that you like that you heard and you're very interested in what that is and learn it by ear. Just break it down learn it straight off of the recording. That's a great day's work. So number seven is learn a jazz lick by ear. Now number eight is along those lines, it's take a jazz lick through all 12 keys, okay? Practicing all 12 keys, very important, very great exercise to do. Now, I talk about uh, in episode 117 how to practice licks in all 12 keys. So if you're a little unsure of how to go about that, how to start doing that, go and listen to uh, Learn Jazz Standards podcast episode 117 after this. Again, write this down if that sounds like something that you should do. So number eight, take a lick through all 12 keys, Number nine is practice some jazz etudes, okay? Practice some jazz etudes. Etudes are really just little compositions. Usually, they're little solos that are written to try to, um, I guess, 
practice specific techniques or certain ideas. Uh, so, uh, for example, I do have a jazz etudes book called 15 Essential Jazz Etudes. You can just Google that or look that up or click on the link in the show notes. Um, that really just sort of outlines really basic, straightforward jazz language, right? Just nothing complicated. Just try to outline the chord changes. Of course, there's lots of other etude books out there. Um, there's some for free online as well. So that would be something to work on. So practice some jazz etudes is number nine. All right, moving right along to number 10, compose. Compose your own jazz lick. All right, so instead of learning one by ear for recording, compose your own jazz lick. So think of a chord progression like a 2 5 1 or a 1 6 2 5. Whatever the chord progression is, decide to compose a lick over top of that. Now, composing is something that I always suggest to do because it helps you solidify your own perception of jazz language. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. What it matters is that this is what you actually know and understand about jazz language, right? Which goes on to number 11. So number 10 was compose your own jazz lick. Number 11 is compose your own jazz solo. Okay, so it's a little bit of a bigger project here. Compose your own jazz solo. I really do always suggest to students to do this. Uh, I mentioned doing this in some of my courses because, again, like I said, great way to document where you're at with your jazz playing. And it really helps you solidify for yourself what you would like to play in an improv setting. So I actually do this. I compose a jazz solo on the spot on a podcast episode. That's uh, podcast episode number 68, how to compose a jazz solo from scratch. I think I compose a solo over It Could Happen to You on the podcast. So if you're interested in listening to that, checking out my process for doing that, that would be episode 68 to check out. So that's number 11, compose your own jazz solo. Number 12, is learn how to play a jazz solo by ear. Learn how to play a jazz solo by ear, okay? So this, again, is a bigger project. This is checking out an entire jazz solo, not just a, a lick, which I would call micro information. This is macro, so a bigger piece to work on. I always suggest a bunch of different solos. Um, one that I suggest in my 30 Steps to Better Jazz playing to start with, for those who have never done it before, is Freddie Freeload, uh, Miles Davis's solo on the jazz standard Freddie Freeloader. It's just a blues, and it's a great accessible solo, so that's one to check out. And to learn jazz solos by ear, I would suggest my list process, which I'll talk about later in this episode too. And so I did a great video on the list process for learning jazz standards, but it also goes for learning jazz solos. So you can go to learnjazzstandards.com forward slash list process, forward slash list process, and you can find that video there. Okay, so that's number 12, learn how to play a jazz solo by ear. Number 13 is practice specific chord progressions. Okay, so 251, major 251s and minor 251s. Those are the most common chord progressions in jazz. So maybe decide, hey, I want to work on minor 251s. And just start experimenting with as many different ideas as you can over those chord progressions. So number 13 is just pin down one chord progression and work on it. Number 14, practice improvising over one chord. So forget about chord progressions for a second. Just practice over one chord. And it could just be a major seventh chord. It could just be a minor seventh chord. Or maybe it's a dominant seven sharp 11. Like how do I actually play and improvise over that chord? Well, instead of worrying about it in a context of a chord progression, just worry about it in an isolated situation. So just practice that dominant seven sharp 11 by itself and experiment play with a backing track, play with a metronome, whatever it is, just practice over one chord. So that's number 14. Number 15 is compose your own contrafact. Compose your own contrafact. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with what a contrafact is, that is essentially a melody that is written over an existing set of chord changes, okay? Um, the most common contrafacts are anything over rhythm changes because that's Gershwin's I Got Rhythm. So in other words, Olio, that's a rhythm changes tune. That is a contrafact over top of Gershwin's I Got Rhythm. Um, so if you uh, would like to learn more about that, I did an entire episode where I composed a contrafact and why you should do that. So that's Learn Jazz, Stand Jazz Standards podcast episode 107. So episode 107 is where I talk about contrafacts. So that's number 15. Number 16 is practice guide tones. 
Okay, practice guide tones over a jazz standard. So this is the thirds and sevenths of each chord. And I really talk about this in the podcast episode 53. So uh, practice guide tones 53. This is something I always suggest to everybody, uh, especially when they're starting out with a new standard, they're trying to figure out how to navigate it, just identifying what those really key chord tones are and how to voice lead and connect them to the other chords in the song. That is a great starting point for jazz improvisation, really helps you get that foundation in place so that you can move on from there. Okay, so number 16, practice guide tones over a jazz standard or chord progressions. Okay, number 17, this one is probably the easiest one, and that is listen to jazz. Yes, listening to jazz is one of the best practices that you can do. You don't even have to touch your instrument, and you will be doing some great work. So number 17 is listen to jazz. And I don't really think that, you know, I think that there's more that we can do than just simply passively listening. I believe in active listening. And so if you want to go to uh, a recent episode, episode 145, I talk about how to listen to a jazz recording and get something out of it. I believe I listened to uh, Miles solo on Someday My Prince Will Come and oh Hank Mobley's as well. Um, maybe we listen to Winton Kelly's. I can't remember all that I do, but I really go through and I'm like listening actively and I walk you through how I'm listening to that song. And that's going to be a good episode to check out so that you can uh, know how to really listen and know what to listen for when you're listening to jazz. So that's episode 145. Again, guys, have this all linked up in the show notes today. If you're, uh, you know, thinking, man, this is a lot of information, wish I had this all in one place, learnjazzstandards.com forward slash episode 153. Okay, so that is episode, uh, whoops, that's number 17, listen to jazz. Okay, now let's move on to the next category, which is jazz repertoire. So this is learning jazz standards, learning um, this body of, of, of tunes that are really important for us understanding jazz in the first place, right? This is where the music sprung from, whether you want to compose or you know do something cutting edge or not, okay? So number 18 is simply to learn a jazz standard. Just learn a jazz standard in your practice session. So again, um, I'm going to refer to the list process for learning jazz standards, which you can find at learnjazzstandards.com forward slash list process for a great video of how to learn a jazz standard. Um, I also, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, and I mentioned it in that video, but I do have a guide called Learn Jazz Standards the Smart Way. And that is also a great place just to get a free guide sent to you that has the list process plus a bonus step. So you can find that at learnjazzstandardsthesmartway.com. I know, I know, a ton of links. But that's kind of what this episode is for today is just to give you a, a portal into everything that we got going on here. Okay, number 19. We're making it through the list here. We're getting closer to the end. Learn a jazz standard you already know in a different key, okay? So maybe you know how to play It Could Happen to You, and that's usually in concert E-flat. Try taking it to concert F major, right? Okay, so take any jazz standard that you already know and challenge yourself. Try it in a different key, all right? That's going to cause your brain to think differently, your fingers to act differently. You're going to have to transpose. That means you have to really understand the chord changes. So always a good practice, like I said, to take things in different keys. So a jazz standard in a different key is really going to help you know it. So that's number 19, learn a jazz standard in a different key. Okay, number 20, learn a jazz blues head. Learn a jazz blues head. Blues, important uh, song form and jazz. So knowing melodies and knowing, of course, how to play the blues, super important. Um, Had a cool episode for improvising over the blues, if you're interested, recently. That was episode 146, Strategies for Improvising Over a Jazz Blues. So that's episode 146. So number 20, learn a jazz blues. Number 21, learn a rhythm changes head. Now, Rhythm Changes, already mentioned that in this podcast episode, is another important song form that you really should be familiar with. And not only that, it just has a lot of great classic jazz harmony in it. Um, If you're looking for a list of Rhythm Changes heads to learn, okay, go to learnjazzstandards.com forward slash Rhythm Changes, forward slash Rhythm Changes, and I have uh, I, not even a big list, just a list of nine, just to keep things simple for you that you can start with so you can learn some rhythm changes head. So that's number 21, learn a rhythm changes head. Number 22 is practice playing a jazz standard with a metronome, no backing track, all right? No ba- don't use a backing track, 
all right? Just a metronome. So play a jazz standard, whether it just be you're playing the melody or just the chords or improvising over top of it, just with a metronome. I, I usually like to default on having the metronome click on beats two and four. I think that's a great way to build internal time, but everybody's on a different page. So if you need to put on every single beat, that's okay too. If you want to be more adventurous, only one beat per measure, that's fine as well. Whatever you want to do, there are tons of metronome exercises that you can work on to really work on your time feel. But I, this the number 22 is just basic and simple. Practice playing a jazz standard with a metronome and no backing track. Okay. The, we have uh, just a handful more here. So we're going to go to the last category, which is ear training. And specifically, this is the fundamentals of ear training, because technically anything that I told you today where I said learn a lick by ear or a solo by ear or a jazz standard by ear, that's all ear training. That's a very... Um, application-based ear training, you are going to be improving your ear by doing those things. But these are the fundamentals, which I personally believe, and if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know that I believe these are important to have these fundamentals down, okay? So let's start with those. Number 23 is interval recognition. Work on recognizing what intervals sound like, whether it be a major third, or uh, uh, a minor sixth, or uh, descending, right? I'm thinking ascending right now. What if it was a minor third descending, or a major third descending, right? So work on that. Now, I talk all about that in episode 78 of the podcast, how to recognize intervals, so check that out there. And number 24 is along those lines, practice singing intervals, okay? So maybe you hear a note, right? Like D... Okay, now if I want to sing a major third above that, D da. Okay, I can do that. I could hear a note, a reference pitch as I call it, and I can sing up to that interval. Or D da. That's a major third descending, right? So I have those sounds in my ears because I can recognize them, but practicing singing is another thing. So that's uh, number 24 is singing intervals. Again, episode 78, I really talk about that as well. Uh, number 25. Just several more here. Practice recognizing chords. Practice recognizing chords. You know, what does a major seventh chord sound like? What does a dominant seventh chord sound like? You can get even deeper than that. And what does a, a dominant seven flat nine sound like? You know, there's different things like that. So that's episode 79. You can tell we're going through a series here. Episode 79, if you want to learn more about how to start recognizing chords by ear, by themselves. Okay. Now, 26. It's so along the same lines what we did with intervals, practice singing chords, practice singing chords. So again, if you start with a reference pitch, and I'm going to sing a, 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 an augmented triad here. So, D da da, D da da, okay, that's an augmented triad, right? So you just start with the note. And then you sing up from there. So singing is really important because it, it really proves that you've internalized those sounds. You can also whistle. You can also hum. So that's uh, episode 79 if you want to learn more in general about recognizing and singing chords. Okay, two more left. Number 27 is learn chord progressions by ear. Learn chord progressions by ear. This is the toughest one for most people. You can learn more about doing that on episode 80. Again, we're just going right through this series here. Episode 80 is where I talk more about learning chord progressions by ear. So that's number 27. Number 28, the last one, is practice melodic dictation. Practice melodic dictation. And melodic dictation is a way that you can start connecting your ear to your instrument more. And it's really a similar exercise to learning a lick by ear. It's just a short musical phrase or even a melody. And you're hearing it and then as quickly as possible trying to translate that onto your instrument. And this is something in my How to Play What You Hear course. We have a whole module where we work on this, where we work on just melodic dictation, where I give all these different melodies and you try to hear them and then play them on your instrument. But it's a great practice for you to do as well. And again, I talk more about that in the next podcast episode in this series, and that was episode 81, if you want to learn more about, um, in general, translating what you hear to your instrument, but I do talk as well about melodic dictation as a good practice in that episode as well. Okay, that is it. That's all 28 right there. I think I just hit the microphone, so if you heard a big 
boom, that's what happened. That's all 28. That's a lot of stuff. Again, I left, I, I said a lot of links, a lot of uh, videos, a lot of podcast episodes, uh, even some blog posts. So all those links are at the show notes today at learnjazzstandards.com forward slash episode 153. What I want you to do is just whatever ones stuck out to you, have them written down and make a plan to start actually doing them, right? Because those who take action are the ones that are going to see the results. So that's all I want you to do. I want you to just take those ones that stood out to you that you know you need to work on, take action on them, and start getting results. That was a lot of stuff to go over. But what I wanted to do with this episode is not only remind you of things that you can be practicing and working on, but also show you that at Learn Jazz Standards, we have a huge library of content and you don't have to wait till the next podcast comes episode comes out or whatever new things we come out. In fact, we come out with a new podcast episode, a new blog post and a new video every single week. But there's also a huge library of content that we have. So I wanted you to find stuff to practice and also just realize, you know, if you're bored, there's a lot more stuff uh, to learn on Learn Jazz Standards. So make sure you check out all of those links today. And then if you are wondering, well, I, I want to be notified when all the new stuff comes out, just a friendly reminder to sign up for the mailing list. That's at learnjazzstandards.com forward slash join. Make sure you're connected because that's where a lot of the information and you know really the inside information is going on is there. All right. Okay. Like I said, we're going to be coming out with a, a, a guest episode next week, which I'm excited about. I know it's been a long time since we've had a guest. I'm excited for it too, trust me, because it's actually, it, it can get tiring to be the one teaching every single week. So I'm excited to get some other voices on, get some other wisdom, people that are smarter than me in some areas. And that's why I do this because I want to serve you the best way possible. So make sure that you give a kind rating and review on the podcast if this has been helping you out. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and I'm going to see you in the next episode. See you then. Thanks for listening to the LJS Podcast, brought to you by LearnJazzStandards.com. Subscribe to the series on iTunes, and don't forget to join our jazz community at LearnJazzStandards.com forward slash newsletter.